I'm interested in the overall impressions you took away, both of the community and of the people you met yesterday. Well, I think that uh, I'd been to Attawapiskat before, and I think yesterday the 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 strength of the youth and the leadership they've demonstrated was, I think, the just truly powerful. Uh, they they focused on what they needed. They made an eloquent presentation, and it was uh, it was truly impressive and a and a and a roadmap of what we can do together. I want to come back. I'll come back to your pres to their presentation in just a second. But I do want to to ask if you were able to see anything specifically. Your cabinet colleague, Health Minister Jane Philpott, last week responded by sending 18 mental health workers up to Attawapiskat to help in this immediate suicide crisis. Did you hear or see any evidence that they are having a measurable impact when you were there? Yes, and I, I think that also, of course, Ontario, the emergency medical assistance team was there. There were some of them on the plane with us, that this is a very impressive uh, um, delegation of help. Um, Keith Kahn from First Nations Inuit Health Branch was with us yesterday and was uh, listening with us. And so it's very important that, that we put in place the, a team that can do a sm sm smooth transition from when the emergency team is there to medium and long-term solutions uh, uh, about, uh, you know, in terms of mental health and individual and counseling. It was also very exciting for me to hear that the First Nations Inuit Health Branch uh, has the resources to be able to put in place right away uh, one of the things or a number of the things that the, the youth leaders are asking for, and that's on the land training and, and the ability to, to get out on the land and healing. And we know that's evidence-based. We know that works. It's what the youth have been asking for, and I was very pleased that, uh, that Health Canada is able to, to, to immediately work with the youth to get this done. Let's, uh, let's turn to some of the other things they were asking for in the presentation you referenced. Uh, yes, you met with the chief, I know, but you had this meeting with youth leaders. We have some images to show because uh, you tweeted them and, of course, uh, some reporters along with. So we see you as you interacted with the young people of Anahuapiskat. Some really lovely pictures there. But then you had a, a sort of a, a round table, if I can put it that way. The first young man to the microphone was a 20-year-old by the name of Robert Sutherland. And he had... Um, some very pointed questions, which I put up here in a graphic for our viewers. He said this to you yesterday, tell me why we First Nations live in third world conditions. Why is it so easy for the government to welcome refugees and offer them first class citizenship in our country? When will Canada wake up and open its eyes to First Nations communities? So the second part of that chiefly, I mean, it's a legitimate question that some Canadians ask you here. Why is the government spending tens of million dollars to bring people here when there are such huge huge issues affecting Canadians here that should be a, a greater priority. How did you answer specifically his question? Well, I think that in both the Robert Sutherland and uh, Sky Kustash and the were extremely poignant and, and direct about what they need. But that particular question is one that, that we need all of the children, coast to coast to coast, and the youth to understand that Canadians do care about them. Their, their, their lives are valued. And that's why in this last budget, uh, uh, you know, the $8.4 billion uh, that, that we want uh, to make sure is uh, meets the needs that, that those youth and 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 uh, indigenous leadership across the country have as their priorities, and and I hope we can change Robert's mind not only by our visit, but also that all Canadians really watching and and uh, and really wanting them to be reassured that they do matter, and uh, and that we want to see them succeed. As we said to. Um, the youth there, that there's going to be one of them one day is going to be the MP for that area. There's somebody there that's going to be the chief. We want them to see that they've got a future and that, that Canadians are really supporting them in that journey. You offered more than words, to be sure, yesterday. You uh, did make a commitment, uh, a concrete pledge to both a, a new youth centre and more youth programming. But there was no costing of this and there was no schedule, and we know these people don't want to wait. They don't have the time. So can you provide any further detail on what it was that you announced yesterday? 
Yes. Um, the youth had asked for a youth center, and it was a conversation I had with Dr. Herrick. Eric Hoskins on Sunday morning is something that he also thought that the province of Ontario would be interested in helping um, um, obtain. Um, it is a conversation with chief and council as to whether that should be a freestanding um, youth centre or whether it should be part of a, a, a designated space in a in a bigger centre in terms of culture uh, and uh, elders, youth, because the youth were saying that it has to be a, a place where parents and elders can come as well together to get in touch with their culture. But, I mean, if I just list some of the things they wanted in self-care, CPR, culture teaching, um, it is a speaker series. Uh, dealing with youth with disabilities. These kids have really thought through the programming that is necessary, and we don't have to wait for a building to get on with those things that, uh, that, the, that the youth have decided are really important in terms of how they move out of this crisis into the summer and, and, um, and, and into the year. So the land-based programming um, and, the, and, the, and a, a, a programming um, in in the in the community is uh, very very important to so them that, and we need them to help help plan it so that can begin even before some sort of a physical youth center do you have costing details or anything like that or is that as well to be worked out with the province it it will be but mainly worked out with the community we have right. to we have to work with the community to find out what exactly they what they need in that in that big space where the school um, was gone um, there is a there is a need. Uh, also, there's space where the the trailers were finally, finally demolished uh, in the in recent weeks. So that we we want the community to and and I think the exercise of planning together with the youth as to what the community needs is there. But then there is money in the budget um, for us to be able to do what they what 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 they think and what they decide they need. So there's our short-term needs, but then, of course, there is the long-term, and Charlie Angus spoke of the uh, cycle of despair, and you responded by saying the government has both hope and a plan. Hope and a plan. Now, you've, all, you've said that this is not about money for your government. It's not just about money for the new Liberal government. So the plan. How close are you to a plan that's going to do something about the ongoing, the chronic inequalities that exist? Well, the, as, as you know, Heather, the social determinants of health, of poverty, violence, the environment, shelter, equity, education, those are complex issues. And what, what was very clear from chief and council is that they don't want piecemeal um, approaches. They want all government departments together with the province to work with their community, to develop a plan. Um, that, that will deal with all of these issues. But it is also very important right away that the youth feel they have a voice. And so uh, working with uh, Charlie Angus, uh, that there is a plan to uh, bring a delegation of youth, not just um, from from Attawapiskat, but also Kasheshawan, Fort Albany, the, the working with the, the Grand Chiefs there to bring a delegation. Senator Mar Murray Sinclair has offered to host them. The Prime Minister wants to meet with them and that we will make sure that they have their voices heard. And also it'll be part of me developing a youth advisory committee to, to coast to coast to coast to make sure that young people feel that the, the plans that we put in place are meeting their needs and that they have the opportunity to answer answer the, the, the questions that are out there and, and help us make sure we get it right. Minister Bennett, thank you very much. The meeting was praised as a very positive first step, and we'll look forward to seeing what comes next. Thanks for the thank time this so morning. Thank you so much, Heather. Appreciate it. Tonight on The National, a national conversation about the crisis in Canada's First Nations. And, of course, we want to hear from you. What needs to change? Send your thoughts and opinions to The National. If you're on Twitter, it's at CBC The National. On Facebook, it is facebook.com slash The National.